Welcome, everybody. It's that time again. It's time for the Wednesday Night Warriors. I am Romeo. This is my co-host, Chris G. How is everything with, going? Good, brother. Oh, I'm good. I'm always with Mary Jane, of course, ready for another Wednesday night filled with, I guess, a war. Uh, it's a different kind of Wednesday. Only NXT. Uh, was shown tonight. AEW Dynamite preempted due to the NBA playoffs. They will air their episode on Saturday, and we will be Saturday Night Warriors, I guess, to cover AEW. And but that, we will. Is that what we're covering on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> Saturday's a busy day. You also got NXT Takeover on Saturday, so AEW and NXT go head to head for I think the first hour. Oh man, I have way too much beer. It's gonna be a fun Saturday. <laughs> Yeah, we are going to review the NXT from tonight, August 19th. This is episode 12 of the Wednesday Night Warriors. And as usual, please show your support for us with a thumbs up, a like, and make sure you comment on this video, share, and if you're new, please subscribe to the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. It is a busy week of wrestling. I just mentioned AEW, NXT, SummerSlams on Sunday. Uh... A lot going on, and we're going to cover it all, so make sure you stay tuned. Last week, you guys said AEW was the better show. It won in the Facebook True Heels group poll by a vote of 13 to 6. And that means on the scoreboard, Wednesday Night Warriors scoreboard, AEW 7, NXT 3, and one tie. Talking about tonight's NXT, NXT started with the Wednesday night himself johnny gargano versus ridge holland where the winner was going to the north american title ladder match at takeover 30 this match between these two uh very scary gargano gets dropped on his head oof that looked rough i thought they were going to edit it out since this was taped but they kept it in there to uh remind us how green ridge holland is greener than goose shit this rugby player um if you're this green, you shouldn't be on TV dropping uh, stars. Johnny Gargano is a huge star for NXT on their heads. It's very, very bad. Uh, Johnny Gargano wins with the one final beat. What did you think, Chris? So I thought Ridge looked kind of impressive, but that's because Johnny's so good that he made him look impressive. And yes, that man is greener than those fucking ham and eggs that Sam I Am tried to sell the guy. That time in that book written by that doctor, but uh, I like the I like the match. It was a nice little like Styles clash, but they mix well. He almost killed Johnny Gargano. I don't know how he's still standing. He dropped him right on his fucking head. Like, I mean, I'd get arrested if I dropped somebody <laughs> like that on the head. So, but it was uh you know it's a good match, decent match. Um, next up, Dakota Kai squashes. I don't know if I'm saying this right, Jesse Camilla. EO interrupts. Uh, they brawl. EO's getting the upper hand. Well, then Raquel arrives out of nowhere to save Dakota, so she's still around. And that was the heat that Dakota Kai needed going into their match on Saturday because, like I said last week, uh, EO owned her in those backstage vignettes. vignettes. Uh, and this is what Dakota needed going into Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. I actually think this match went on a little too long. I think she needed to like have a, like a squash squash just to get that momentum going. Uh, but it was a good move bringing Raquel in. I guess everybody did kind of seem to forget about her. So it was good that she went away for a few weeks. Um, maybe she tested positive for the Rona. I don't know. I don't have any sources to back me up. Just speculation. Mary Jane work and you know how it is. She but, works uh, quick. <laughs> oh, she, she works on a day like today. She works very, very, very fast. But uh, you know, it got it accomplished what it was supposed to, and it should be a good match on Saturday. Tegan Knox is interviewed backstage. Uh, very sad. Very hurt by Candice's Candice LeRae's words from last week. Uh, she hopes to talk it over with Candice over a glass of wine. Oh man. <laughs> Grow the fuck up. <laughs> it, it happens. People backstab each other all the time. But hey, uh, you know, maybe somebody will smash a bottle of vino over the other one's head. Next up, six-man tag. 
Legato del Fantasma versus Brizango and Swerve. This match, Swerve was not the legal man when it looked like he had the match won. Uh, so he gets thrown to the outside. And then Escobar finishes off Tyler Breeze with a phantom driver. Legato goes over as I thought they should. So uh, you're just going to totally skip over the fact that the first four to five minutes of this match was a total fucking car crash. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't on Dynamite, so we're just going to skip over that fact. But it was, oh. a, it, was, it was a good car crash for the first few minutes uh, when the action really started to pick up after the commercial break and the whole spot and and uh, finish with Swerve not being the legal man. I thought it was pretty creative. Uh, Legado del Fantasma should have went over and it just story finish furthers the storyline between Santos and Swerve as well. So it got it accomplished everything it was supposed to. Pat McAfee has shown arriving with some former NFL players. H.J. Hawk and Darius Butler. Then it's uh, Pat McAfee in the ring, cutting a promo face-to-face with Adam Cole. Uh, he tells him that he's not a man. And he needs the Undisputed Era in the ring. So everybody goes to the outside, and it's just Pat and Adam in the ring. And I thought this promo by McAfee, um, he's cutting better promos than the people on the roster. And he's not even a wrestler. He's a damn punter. And I thought he delivered some fire here as he tells Adam Cole that he's been champion for 400 days, but he was able to kick his ass in just one minute. And he's bringing it on Saturday. I thought Cole was great here at the end with his tone. You know, he's just done talking. He wants to beat his ass. What did you think of Pat McAfee on the mic selling this match with Adam Cole? You can say whatever you want about him. That man spits fire. He's intense. He just knows how to talk shit, man. He keeps you, uh, keeps you entertained. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that it's at the expense of Adam Cole and the Undisputed Era, but I'm digging Pat McAfee right now. So I, I like where this is going. I hope Saturday we're pleasantly surprised. Um, Adam Cole did have a nice little, a little, uh, little line at the end where he said, "I'm gonna make you my." Bitch, I believe. Good shit. Good shit. Can't wait. No matter what Pat McAfee does in the ring on Saturday, I would like to see more of Pat McAfee at least talking. That's good. Good shit. I want to see more of that. Yes. Tag team women's match Shotzi and Rhea versus Mercedes Martinez and Aaliyah. Uh, This match, Rhea Ripley on the outside power bombs Mercedes over the barricade. Uh, you hear a loud thud. They cut the camera. She's been powered on, on concrete, uh, but very safely, but very safely, I'm sure. Shotzi wins with a senton on Aaliyah. Uh, all I got to say about this is that I love some Rhea and Shotzi together. I really do. Yeah, I mean, it was a decent tag match. Nothing special. I thought it went on a little too long, but that power bomb was definitely like, oh, shit, because she, she, she threw it with some distance, and Mercedes is a big woman. <laughs> so you know Rhea got some strength on her but you know uh just I guess furthers the storyline between them and the Robert Stone brand or does this feel like a blow off that really too yeah sure. I was just about to mention that that felt like something you should say for like the end of the feud I guess for Rhea going over Mercedes uh maybe even for takeover but I don't know that seemed weird holy shit what a video package for Keith Lee and Karrion Cross. Uh, if this didn't get you hyped for their match on Saturday, nothing will. Uh, just play this over again before the match on Saturday. I want to watch this again. This was really good. Yeah, I liked it. I personally would have uh, rather seen Scarlet and Cross actually appear and just, uh, you know, cut a promo or some shit. But this worked for me. I have the feeling that Cross might be our next champion. We will. Elaborate on that with predictions after we're done here. But first, it's time for the main event. It's the Teen Dream, Velveteen Dream versus Finn Balor. Also, the winner here goes into the ladder match at TakeOver. This match is interrupted by my guy, Cameron Grimes. And he just wants to look at his title. He's here for his his property. You know, he gets up on the ladder. He holds the title. He, he introduces himself, you know, they they just a lot of trash talking from the outside, a very observant observer on the outside for Cameron. And then Johnny Gargano comes out. 
he's not happy with Grimes uh, enamor- enamoring himself with the title. And then this just turns into everybody coming out. Everybody come on down. Bronson Reed, Damian Priest. I thought we were heading towards a non-finish here and that maybe both Balor and Dream would be added because I, I just didn't see one of them losing this match. But one of them does lose this match because Timothy Thatcher comes out and attacks Finn Balor, leaving slim pickings for Velveteen. Dirty finish uh, after the match. Everyone takes each other out, and Bronson Reed stands tall at the end, which probably means he ain't winning on Saturday. <laughs> so, <clears throat> when I seen Cameron Grimes come out first, I was a little fucking confused. But then it started to make sense as the match went on. Uh, it, it felt different the way they incorporated everybody in the latter match into, into the actual match instead of waiting for after the match was over and then everybody just brawling. And then, surprise, the match finishes and everybody just fucking brawls anyway. So, thanks for uh, letting me down again, NXT, AK, <laughs> or WWE, more specifically. But it was a good match. Not my favorite match between either men or for either men. But, it, uh, you know, I- I'm excited to see. Hopefully, we get a takeover match between Finn Balor and Timothy Thatcher last minute. Hopefully. But uh, NXT likes to keep those little side feuds uh, ready and fresh for the next TV show. I think I think they're gonna save it for next Wednesday, but I would like for it to be added to Takeover. Do you think the right guy won here? I honestly don't think you could have went wrong either way. Uh, Cause let me I, tell you something, Chris. Before I came on here, <laughs> rustling Toweta. You know they're they're not happy about a lot of things. Cancel cancel culture. They are not happy about Velveteen Dream going over. Uh, Velveteen Dream, obviously, all the drama. Triple H today on his conference call for TakeOver 30 reiterated that they investigated everything about Velveteen Dream. They take the allegations very seriously, and they found nothing. So those screenshots that we saw floating around on Twitter of, of Velveteen Dream's inbox, his DMs, I guess they're fake. Fake news. I don't know. Photoshopped. Who knows? Do you believe this is Velveteen Dream innocent until proven guilty? Or uh, do you think wrestling Twitter has a right to be upset about Velveteen Dream still being a thing on NXT? What? This is a lot to digest. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think WWE has fired people for worse. So the fact that he's on TV and about to get a title shot means that there has to be some type of evidence out there or lack of you know for him to be innocent whether he is or not i don't know i was a dream fan before all this stuff it's good to see him out there it's gonna take a while for him to like grow on me again but i don't know man as you oh man poor choice poor choice of words there chris jeez (laughs) damn it mary you've done it again What do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? <laughs> I was I, I like the Velveteen Dream, man, and I hate to see your brother go through this shit. But you know, I I don't know any any facts, so I can't I can't put my judgment on it yet. It's so weird because you know NXT is not performing in front of a live crowd, so we can't get that that visceral reaction that Velveteen Dream might be getting at this time. Um, and NXT is not going to the Thunderdome, so we're still not gonna get it. But Let's wrap up this NXT uh, match of the night for me. The main event, Dream Balor, despite all the uh, everything that went on at the end, you know, there wasn't much else on this show. Yeah, my match tonight was actually the six man tag. The car crash. <laughs> MVP, I am going to go Pat McAfee for that fire promo. The tone, the delivery, this guy can talk. Keep talking, letting him let him talk. I want to see more Pat McAfee. Yeah, I I was thinking about it, but I actually put Johnny Gargano because uh, he didn't die. And that, that you could have died. <laughs> could have died on that. So we're gonna give him the MVP for not dying. Uh, smooth transition. I'm gonna give the jabroni of the night to the guy that almost killed Johnny Gargano, Rich Holland. Oh, the color green. Uh, you just need some more work. Uh, you got you got to be more careful than that. Johnny Gargano was a star on NXT. 
yeah. what are you doing? You think he got chewed out for that? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I hope I'm pretty sure so later then. <laughs> Can't be doing that. Uh. <laughs> Who's your jabroni? It's Pat McAfee. <laughs> wow. You know why? For the simple reason, you know, if you're a football fan, he brought A.J. Hawk with him, who is a far better talent than Pat <laughs> McAfee, whoever was. So A.J. Hawk looks right, like a wrestler. He does. He does. I mean, he's a big dude. Pat's a big dude, too. But A.J. Hawk was an all-pro linebacker, Super Bowl winner. That motherfucker is bigger than Pat McAfee. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe not outside, but in the football realm he is. So bring, uh, bring, bring more punters next time, Pat. Make yourself look better. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Show of the week is going to be AEW. Uh, even though I haven't seen it, <laughs> AEW wins this week for sure for me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. It, oh, man. I, the, the show would have to be blacked out. Uh, they'd have to have some satellite problems for NXT to win this one. It would have to be Brandy Rhodes and Penelope Cruz versus two whoever. And then a 60 woman <laughs> Iron Man. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm kidding. We love the women. Let's do a quick NXT TakeOver 30 preview and predictions. Uh, won't take long. There's not that many matches as usual. On the pre show, it'll be a triple threat tag team match with the winners being the number one contenders for Imperium. It is Brizango versus Legado del Fantasma and Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. Um, I really want to say Legado takes this, but I, I I don't know if I see heel versus heel versus Imperium. What do you think? Yeah, I I would go Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. I don't see the heel versus heel either. Yeah, Lorcan and Birch. Uh, I. I mean, it Please. could be Brazongo, but I don't see Brazongo. No, I, can, I don't see it. That's the one I see the least. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, I'll go Lorkin and Birch. I just want to see more Oni Lorkin tweets <laughs> as he gets ready for Saturday. I hope it's all caps. All caps. Reed versus Priest versus Gargano versus Dream versus Grimes. Five-way ladder match for the vacated North American Championship. This one, I know it's not going to be Reed. I think it's going to be Damian Priest. Even though I am rooting for my man Cameron Grimes, I think I think they're going to give it to Priest here. You know, I I can go either way because those are the two guys that come right off the top of my head. I, I want to see Priest win, but Cameron Grimes is hot, ill. He's trying to go to the moon. <laughs> so I think, uh, I don't know, I think he might get it. I, I, they might give it to him. Io Shirai versus Dakota Kai. I'm sure Raquel will be at ringside, but I think Io Shirai continues her defense of the women's championship here, overcomes Dakota and Raquel. Yeah, yeah. It's not time to take the belt off yet. But I think Dakota looks strong, hopefully. Hopefully uh, Raquel gets ejected early and they let Dakota do her thing so she can have a good show. Adam Cole versus Pat McAfee. Um, I don't see, I don't recall too often, too many times celebrities or half celebrities in this case, uh, having a wrestling match and losing. So I think Pat wins here somehow, some way. I hope it's through uh, something where maybe Roderick Strong turns on Adam Cole on and on this or. Maybe they kick Adam Cole out of Undisputed Era. I would love to see something like that just to get some story going elsewhere. But uh, I think Pat Pat wins. <sighs> you don't want to say it, do you? <laughs> well, I've never seen a celebrity. Well, uh, yeah, let me take that back because fucking K Fed beat, beat John Cena, no? Who? K Fed? Beat fucking John Cena. I cannot fucking remember for the life. Let me look and... that up real quick. <laughs> Yes, K-Fed won. Yeah, right? He's the only <laughs> he's the only heel celebrity I know that has won a match, though. Because usually all the faces win. LT, Floyd Mayweather was the face, you know? So, Pat McAfee's a heel. I don't know if he's beating Cole. I think Cole gets his revenge. And then the main event for the NXT Championship, Keith Lee versus Karrion Cross. 
this feels like a, a, a big NXT title match. Who do you think wins this? I think Cross is getting it. I think Lee's going to the main roster, Raw SmackDown. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I think he's ready. I think he's, I mean, he's kind of been ready. I think everybody's seen what he could do last year, like around the Survivor Series. So they got the draft coming up and shit. You never know what can happen. I think Cross wins too. I'm not sure on Keith Lee going to the main roster just yet. I think maybe there'll be a rematch. Um, I don't think they like those those ratings that Keith Lee has been doing as champion. Uh, maybe they may feel it's time for a switch. I, I think Cross was going to win anyways, but even more so, I think the, the ratings uh, uh, tell a different story too. Yeah. I got Cross as well for the new NXT champion. What do you think is going to be the match of the night? The ladder match or uh, the main event? Uh, fuck, man, that's a good one. Cause the ladder match is good, but I feel like we're gonna compare it to other ladder matches. Yeah, and other ladder matches for the North American Championship have had better, I guess, athletes or or superstars better suited for a ladder match, in my opinion. So I think I think this one is gonna be good, but it's not gonna be as good as the previous ones, which gives this main event to be special if they get time. Or if they just make Karrion Cross beat the shit out of Lee and Lee would look like not. a monster. I, I mean, if they do that, he would yeah. have to go shit, like, get sh- straight to the main roster. Get him the fuck out of NXT. Just like Cross, you know, uh, be the king over there for a little while. Uh, but if not, I hope they have a really good match. All right. So that is going to do it for this edition of the Wednesday Night Warriors. We will be back uh, reviewing AEW Dynamite. Uh, we're both going to be on the NXT TakeOver Roundtable, so you can hear our thoughts on that pay-per-view on the Roundtable instead of uh, Wednesday Night Warriors. I think at least one of us, or maybe both of us, will also be on the SummerSlam Roundtable as we go over that. So we, I can't wait to go to the Thunderdome. I'm so excited. It's my <laughs> first time. Uh, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Pride of NY. And True Rewind every Monday or Tuesday where we go over the Monday Night War of old, not the Wednesday Night War. Chris, anything you want to plug? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at spick underscore flare underscore woo three O's. Uh, you can find me shit here, Wednesday Night Warriors. Joints and jabronis probably come out at the end of the month with my good brother Pot Heel Ness making his official Joints and Joints and Jabronis debut. A match made in heaven. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, True Hill 87. Make sure to che- uh, check that out with Alex McCarthy. I believe he was on that yes. edition. Yes. And I might be on True Hill 88. I'll let you know. If not, <laughs> you can edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm there, watch that too. And um, yeah, man. All right, guys. Make sure you go to the Facebook group, True Heels, where eventually... After AEW has aired, we will ask you what better show was this week. I it can't. I, I don't see NXT pointing like we spoke about earlier. But, yes, thank you for watching the Wednesday Night Warriors. We'll be back next week. Peace.